How's everyone doing? Today I have a Blu-ray and DVD update with eight pickups right here, including a couple box sets. If you've seen any of these, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know what is your favorite from this uh, haul right here. Uh, first up from Universal is Blockers, the Blu-ray, DVD, Digital HD combo pack. This was rough to sit through. Um, from the trailers, it didn't really appeal to me. It seemed like and it was every kind of, you know, over-the-top, raunchy comedy movie that just tried too hard, and it shows. Like, in the trailer, they were doing the butt-chugging thing. I was like, what? And, you know, that's a, a big scene in here. There you go, John Cena. And I like John Cena and a lot of the roles that he's been in, usually smaller roles, like in Sisters, um, Daddy's Home, Daddy's Home 2 as well, a few other different things, a train wreck. He's been good in those kind of roles. Uh, but in this one, where he had, like, such a bigger role... It, it shows that he's not a good actor. He has some of those WWE roles to the action stuff, but uh, he's not a good actor. And it was cringy to sit through some of the lines of dialogue in the beginning, especially the delivery. Uh, he was the one that was... Everybody else was, you know, decent, doing the stereotypical stuff that they do in pretty much every movie. Um, you know, Ike Barinholtz and then um, Leslie Mann. Uh, so, yeah, it's the same... They, they play the same roles in everything they're in, it seems like. Uh, but John Cena, his delivery of the lines was it was just so incredibly cringy and just ugh. Um, the only good thing I could say about this movie, it gets better in the second half. Uh, there's a little bit more heart to it. They kind of stop trying with the over the top ridiculous, you know, comedic elements, um, just car crashes, nudity, uh, butt chugging, uh, you know, foul language. I mean, it comes to a point where you, they just. They try so hard, and they're trying to appeal to a younger demographic, obviously. Uh, but it's just so unnecessarily raunchy, ridiculous, over the top. And it just tries too hard, and it fails so miserably. Um, it's it's everything that's wrong with modern comedy, essentially, in my opinion. Um, like I said, it does get better in the second half. And I think it's because it kind of lays off the over-the-top comedy elements and tries to go for more of the heartwarming aspect. Uh, and it, the comedy levels are still there, but it's it's toned down. Uh, it's basically about these three parents who are trying to stop their three daughters from uh, their losing their virginity on prom night. They have this lose their virginity pact. So they find out about the pact, and they go on kind of like a wild goose chase to find them at the prom. And they're looking at you know different party house that they're going to be at. And they go to a hotel, and they're searching all over. Um, and they I like the interpersonal relationships between um, all the cast members each other the parents and then the uh, actresses as well um it's it was just it was so rough to sit through especially the first half again i this wasn't for me uh but if you are a fan of the movie um i think you'll enjoy the release from universal it's got some good bonus features i actually watched some of the bonus features just out of curiosity especially the chugging thing which i actually thought the the bonus features were funnier uh than the actual gags that they used in the the movie in fact the trailer shows pretty much most of the you know the big gags right there there's a couple other ones there there's some nudity ones which again i felt again was unnecessary uh but uh this is directed by Kay cannon this is her first uh her feature length directorial debut she was a producer in the pitch perfect movies uh, a few other different things uh but yeah this I, I couldn't give it a recommendation personally, but again, if you're a fan of the movie, it's a good release, and you've got the unrated bonus content on here. So, yeah, John Cena, uh, this this was like, I guess, his biggest, you know, role where he was outside of action, and it just, it, it hurt to see him try to deliver some of those lines. Ugh. And let me know what your favorite uh, John Cena movie is, and let me know what your favorite uh, recent comedy movie in the last like, three years or so. Because a lot of the recent comedy movies just seem to be uh, overly raunchy, overly ridiculous, try to jump the shark as many times as possible for shock value, and they think that's funny. They just use a lot of foul language and nudity and you know raunchy moments, and they think, oh, well, people are going to love that. That's hilarious. And no, it just usually is cringy, falls flat, feels forced, and is just anything but funny at least for me I don't know. there's a there's a few funny ones out there but uh, uh this one to me was just it was rough to sit through the dialogue and then it just felt so forced and absurd with a lot of the the gags they did and it just it wasn't funny it felt flat and uh they should have stuck to more of the emotional aspect the heartfelt part of the comedy and just done a little bit of the the toned down gags and that would have worked a lot better 
Uh, next up is Mimic, which I did a full movie review for this one already, so you can check that out on my channel. I'm going to do a giveaway for this one. I thought this one was really atmospheric and haunting. Um, the ending could have been a little bit better. That was my major criticism for it, but it was a good kind of like a, you know, urban myth ghost story kind of deal going on here that can, you know, there's this creature in the woods, this uh, tiger that they call it, um, and it can mimic the voices of people. And I love the mythology for it. And I love how it plays out. Um, very atmospheric. That was one of the biggest things I appreciated. Some creepy moments. It was all subtle creepiness. Though. There was no real gore or anything like that. But again, I'll be doing a giveaway for that coming up soon. So look forward to that. It's from Wellgo USA. Next up is The Lesson. This is from uh, Scream Factory. Um, this is a British horror movie thriller. Uh, basically about these teens. I think they call them chavs over there. I think that's the expression. Basically these teens who are just uh, douches. They're just terrible, terrible people. And this, uh, they basically, I, this is shocking to me. Like, People complain about America, but if the kids act like this, that, that it wouldn't fly in America. At one scene, there's a kid who puts gum in the teacher's hair. He's like, I didn't do anything. And they basically like threaten the teacher and uh, carve things on his car and basically just insult him and treat him like crap. And I'm like, this is insanity. Like this would not fly in America. First of all, you get kicked out of the, you know, the class, kicked out of the school. Uh, it's just, you, you probably get arrested for some of the threats, but I mean, uh, a lot of the teachers, just, it just wouldn't fly. So it's crazy the way that these kids act. I get, you know, juvenile delinquency is everywhere, but uh, in schools, it just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go here. Um, <laughs> this is another thing too. There's a huge tonal shift in the movie, which it just, it drags so much. And then it's so, at the ending, it's so vomitous uh, how formulaic it is. It's just cringy and terrible. Uh, and you know, there's uh, there's basically the one kid and uh, his, he lives with his brother and his brother's girlfriend. And there, you can tell right away, the way that the brother's girlfriend talks to him, you know there's going to be a romance aspect there. And even that is just, why? Just come on. You, you There's better characters. You can you develop them better. Uh, so basically this teacher, uh, you know, he sees the two delinquents uh, walking out. And um, they basically, he basically hits them on the head and drags them in and basically uh, tortures them. And, you know, tries to teach them, you know, if you can uh, you know find this uh, word in the dictionary, if you can repeat what I told you about it, if you can learn, then you're doing well, and you know it just ties them up. But for the first half of the movie, it's just these kids being douches, and then the one kid, you know, going through the drama of his daily life. And you know, um, they could have played it more about the family aspect, the mother. I like that they kind of they they touch on it here and there, but they wish they got a little bit more in depth and play that up more. And again, the ending was a huge ridiculous aspect that just doesn't work and then once the teacher starts going like i was thinking all right cool something's actually happening now uh that whole part was just a waste because they kept going in depth with all the you know the descriptive uh definitions and literary references which doesn't work for the rest of the movie um they could have done more with that um and it just it just didn't fit the tonal shift just was ruined and it kind of feels like it drags too when it shouldn't it should be that should be the part where you're heart is racing. I was like, uh, when is this going to end? I get it. You're, you're trying to teach them these literary references and definitions of words and seeing how fast they can find the word in the dictionary before he hammers nails in their hands. And, but I was like, who cares at this point? I don't care about the characters. I don't care about anything. This, this whole part is just going on too long. It's too convoluted. Uh, it's too repetitive and it was just rough to sit through. And then the ending was just too ridiculous. It was just, it, it angers me just to think about it now of how it played out. Um, so very disappointed. Um, it does have nice slipcover and reversible artwork right there. So if you are uh, a fan of the movie, you'll appreciate the release for it. Um, no special features, doesn't deserve any. It's 100 minutes and it felt like 300 minutes. Uh, <laughs> I actually was appreciating certain aspects of it in the beginning, the backstory, especially the family aspect, which I, I wish they would have delved a little bit more into. Um, and then there's just that dramatic tonal shift that just, everything from there just goes downhill. And you would think that would be the part that gets the best, uh, but it's not the case. Uh, next up from RLJ Entertainment is Terminal. I love that slipcover. Uh, there's like these little uh, TV screens right there with the different characters in there. And it's got a kind of like embossing. And then the title right there has like a glossy as well as um, Margot Robbie's coat. And you get a little bit of a sheen. Uh, that picks it up really on there but this is one where I, I felt like 
it thought it was an intelligent movie, but right away, you as soon as they introduce this one character, you know he's the mastermind. It, it come on, it's so absurd and cliche and laughably cliche. And this is another one where it just gets it's so absurd and ridiculous and just it feels so forced and it feels so unnecessarily uh, kind of descriptive with certain things. And even the very last twist of the end, you kind of get a hint about that too. And I was just like, come on. It's it's a waste of these actors' talents for this movie. Uh, Margot Robbie, Simon Pegg, Mike Myers. Uh, basically, there's these you know, hitmen. And uh, it's the, the whole point is basically it's a revenge story. But uh, basically, this Margot Robbie is a hit woman and she makes a deal with this other one to get the uh, essentially the contracts for this main hit person. And he says, then she says, basically, if she can take down these other hitmen um, that she can get all the rest of the contracts. And so it's basically her playing out these other people and uh, just, you know, Mike Myers, what are you doing, man? Simon Pegg, Margot, all of them. It's just a waste of their talents. Uh, again, it's a movie where I, they probably thought this was so smart, but as soon as you've seen the one character, you know, you know exactly who he's going to be, who he's going to turn out to be, and it's just... It's like a super watered down version of The Usual Suspects where it's so on the nose, so ridiculous, and then too convoluted with the whole revenge aspect and then the playing off the different characters. It's just such a waste. And uh, it's there's really nothing positive I can say about this movie. Even the last twist at the end, I feel like you get a little hint. And it, even that was like, it was too ridiculous, unnecessary, and just, it just doesn't work. And there's a lot of, um, I don't like the set pieces too. There's a lot of darkness here, you know, the tunnels, um, they basically show the, the one diner, there's like a club at one point, a dingy, uh, little apartment. Uh, so all of that. And, uh, it just, it didn't work on any level. Uh, you've got some special features here, right there in the back. Nice slip cover. Margot Robbie is stunning to look at. That's pretty much, um, the only thing positive I could say about it. Um, the actors did what they could with the roles they had. Mike Myers plays the kind of goofy kind of stuff uh, again there he is right there he's kind of like a janitor character um it's just uh, a mess of a movie next up uh another one from lionsgate this is from a24 studios uh, i don't necessarily love all, everything that they do but i like a lot of the unique ideas they put out there um basically it's about this young 15 year old kid he moves with his father to portland oregon the father is essentially an alcoholic goes from job to job woman to woman um, and basically he, the kid runs, that's like his big thing. He jogs every day. Then he comes across this, um, like horse, uh, stable area, horse racing track. And he meets, um, Steve Buscemi, who, uh, is an owner of some of these horses. And he basically, uh, you know, hires the kid on to take care of the horses for minimal pay. And they travel around to different horse races. And when some of the horses don't win, they get shipped off to Mexico to the slaughterhouse. And he creates a bond with this one horse called Lean on Pete. And it's somewhat formulaic. Um, the characters are all cardboard cutouts, essentially. Uh, Chloe Sevigny, I wish her role was a little bit uh, bigger. Uh, I thought she was one of the better parts of the movie. And people seem to really praise Charlie Plummer's actor. I'm not, I, he looks familiar, but I'm not sure if I've seen him in anything else. Uh, nothing pops out. Um, but the acting performance here was something that really kind of threw me off. I don't know if it's the actor himself or he was told to play it that certain way. But the way that he talks and acts, it seems like there's something like off about him. Like um, I, I don't know how to say it politely. Uh, there's something not quite right. Like he repeats himself a lot. He seems really out of sorts. Like he doesn't seem to have the societal norms, and uh, he, he just doesn't seem to be in touch with reality and how people act and do things. Like it's just the way that he praises the the one uh, girl in the beginning for cooking, and the way that he talks and acts. It's just it's it's not normal and it's something like they didn't really touch on in the movie at all i was like what's going on uh because it, it just doesn't make any sense so basically it's about the story something happens to the father and he kind of uh treats the son poorly kind of uh neglects him and so um the horse of course you you know horse of course um is you know what's gonna happen with that so he uh steals the horse because he was gonna get slaughtered so uh young charlie right here steals the horse and he's traveling from portland and his goal is to go to wyoming to find his aunt and uh, he steals the steve Buscemi's truck at one point but the truck breaks down so a lot of it is him 
like walking through desert areas and him talking to the horse and the bonding of, with that. Um, and he comes across through other characters. Uh, he runs across a character played by Steve Zahn who is semi-homeless. And even that character, again, I felt like it was kind of a cardboard cutout character. It does have some darker moments, which I appreciate. I wish they kind of would have gone a little bit grittier with it. It's not a uh, really that, you know, family friendly as, you know, you would expect from the cover and uh, some of the trailer shots. It's definitely got some really depressing, darker moments in here. I kind of wish they would have gone a little bit more in depth there. It's a little too glossed over in certain aspects. They didn't really touch upon that, the way that he talks, the dialogue, the way that he acts and reacts and repeats himself and doesn't seem to have the societal norms for certain things. Um, it just, it seems off and they didn't talk about that at all. And that was something that kind of bothered me. I felt like they should have mentioned that. Uh, it would have explained a lot of things. And uh, yeah, again, the ending was another thing that it just, for me, didn't really work. This does have a lot of positive reviews though. So if you're into, uh, you know, basically kind of a road trip slash coming of age story about a young kid stealing a horse and traveling to uh, find his aunt, then maybe you'll enjoy it. Again, it does have darker moments. You kind of, again, I felt like certain aspects were formulaic, predictable. You could see it coming a mile away. The characters were kind of cardboard cutouts. Um, but I, I do appreciate some of the acting. Um, and uh, again, there's certain aspects that I liked about it. I just wish they would have gone a little bit more in depth. And in certain parts, I felt it could have been edited out. Um, it didn't really add to the story and some of the pacing was a little dramatic in points. Um, but again, it's a nice release from Lionsgate. Um, the only special feature is Searching for Home, the making of Lean on Pete, uh, but a good picture quality for it. And uh, next up from uh, Paramount is Jackass, the complete movie and TV collection. And there you go. Let me know who your favorite Jackass character is. Includes all seven movies in the classic TV collection. So it's basically two sets repackaged right here. You've got the seven movie collection, um, all the different ones right there, plus uh, Bad Grandpa and uh, the unrated version of it too. And then you've got uh, the classic TV collection right there. It includes the last tapes, all the different volumes. So if you have a favorite uh, skit or something too from Jackass, let me know. Uh, some just, just crazy outlandish stuff. I like the swing tray, very simplistic. That's all you really need. A lot of these companies, they stack the discs or do cardboard sleeves. Not a fan. Uh, so good job, Paramount. <laughs> just as soon as I say that, uh, sometimes the discs aren't always uh, in place on the disc hubs. Uh, but no scratches on that one, thankfully. It looks good. So yeah, we got to make sure they're stuck on the disc hubs. But yeah, there's the swing tray. That's all you really need for that. Um, no unique artwork or anything like that. It has the titles, essentially. But I mean, I guess for a... These are kind of like budget sets. You're just going to put the titles. You're lucky to get that, really. Um, so there you go. Jackass. The complete movie and TV collection all in one box set. I like that it's essentially like that. I would have... I don't know. I have mixed feelings about the two separate ones in there like that. Uh, I kind of wish it was one complete thing. But I understand why they did it. Kind of, you know, repackaging and makes it easier that way. But, uh, you know, there you go. Jackass. Let me know who your favorite Jackass character is. Your favorite skit. Um, there's a lot to choose from. A lot of craziness. Next up from Lionsgate is uh, Ancient Aliens. All 135 episodes of the 10th Anniversary Edition, a 36-disc collection. I knew this had a complete series set before, but it didn't have as many discs on there. And I think uh, maybe it has more seasons in here. I'm not 100% sure. i got to do a comparison to that. But it's from the first 10 seasons. Um, so, yeah, that is 120 hours uh, and 6 minutes. Uh, so, yeah, just... And then for these sets right here, you have these uh, kind of show you real quick and i like how it makes the design down there too on the spine but i'll go ahead and show you how uh they come in these uh the season sets like that there you go and the packaging kind of opens up like that and the discs are in there i'm not a fan of the housing of the disc like that but uh the other one was like a clear plastic case so yeah you get seasons uh one two are on uh, the one set then three and four and then you've got season six volume, that was one and two, and then volume, season five, volume one and two, seasons seven and eight, and then season nine and season 10, volume one and two. So there you go, they're all in there like that. Um, let me know if you have a favorite Ancient Aliens episode. Personally, I'm not a fan of this show. I thought it was uh, too ridiculous the way that they jumped to conclusions uh, from one thing to the absurd. Um, 
it's basically like one episode was, uh, you know, the Israelites could have traveled throughout the desert and survived. A aliens must have come down and given them technology. Uh, I'm like, how did you get from that to that? There's, you know, it's the different things. It's like, oh, the cave over here had hieroglyphics that were similar to ones over there. Clearly, aliens must have come down and talked to both of them and shown them what to draw. And, you know, they look the same and... I mean, come on, you're just jumping to these absurd, ridiculous conclusions with no real evidence there. You're just basically, ah, this movie looks like this movie. Aliens must have done it. Like It, it becomes a hilarious meme. They're the one guy with the big hair, he's in all the different memes, and this must be aliens. And I feel like this whole show is like that. It's just like a big joke to me. Um, but people love it. It's got a huge popular following. And uh, I don't know, maybe I've missed some good episodes. If Is that, is that a thing? The episodes I saw, I try to give it a chance, and it was just too ridiculous. The way that they jumped to the conclusions like that of absurdity, it just, it was a huge turnoff, and I just don't understand the appeal. But uh, there you go. That's the, the set design for it. Um, it's a sturdy design right there. Um, I don't really love the disc housing, but uh, if you're a fan, you'll appreciate You can get it in a big box set like this. Uh, it does have some reflective foil design on the packaging, if you can see it. It's picking up right there on uh, the back too, looks cool. So there you go, those are the pickups. Let me know if you've seen them and which one was your favorite. Leave me a comment or video response down below and I'll put a link to uh, my review for uh, the Mimic uh, down below as well in the comment section. I'll probably do in the pinned one and I'll be doing a review for that coming up soon so look forward to that. Hope everybody's doing well, take care.